Hey, this is Mr. Mitchell with a video about Newton's third law of motion. Here are your questions. Please write them down. Newton's third law of motion says, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Here are four examples. Here you have a balloon that you've blown up and you've let it go. It's untied. So it is going to be moving in this direction. And I'm using the wrong color. Red on red doesn't work out. It's moving in this direction. But you know what's happening. It has an opposite force, the wind coming out the end of it. So the reaction is the balloon is forced upward. The re oh, My bad. The action is air rushes out. The reaction is the balloon is pushed, pushed upward. Action, reaction. Here we have this guy hunting. His action is he pulls the trigger and the bullet goes out. But the reaction is that the gun kicks into his shoulder. And those of you who have hunted before know that some guns can kick pretty hard. You have a bigger action for every big reaction. Now, this is supposed to be a rocket. CCCP is what was on the Soviet Union's rockets. But anyway, we have a rocket here that is going at 100 Newtons. Let's pretend that it's up, upright. You have the fire and the uh, billows of smoke coming out of it that is the same. It is an equal reaction. So for all these actions, you have to have the same amount of force. You may remember forces in Newtons that is going to be coming out the other side, the action and the reaction. And here's a good example. You have two scales. These are scales that you can hold and put forces or put weight on the other side. Here, if you hook them together and pull in this direction, they will register the same amount of force. They will weigh the same, well, not weigh in this case, it's registering the same amount of force. So for every action, in this case, pulling away, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And those are four good examples, I think. Here's another example, here and here and here. But you may see I have some words here that I want to talk about. The two forces that you have in all these examples are known as an action-reaction force pair. The forces don't necessarily require movement either. For, for example, this girl is pushing on the tree. The tree has to push back, according to Newton's third law. You can see what she says, when I lean against the tree, I don't move. The tree must exert a force back on me. I think I mentioned that a video or two ago, how that's kind of a heady concept to get that. But according to Newton's law, you have a force that's going this way into the tree. So you have to have a force that's coming back at whatever that force is. It's just what the law is. Same here. Here we have this uh, person who is playing golf. There's going to be a force once he hits it. Once he hits it, there's definitely going to be a force going this way. But what is the other force on? The golf ball is actually going to have a force upon the golf club. A is the action of the club on the ball, and B is the action of the ball on the club. And it has to be an equal and opposite reaction. And you can see right here, you have two people that are on skates, and if they push, of course, they're both going to go in opposite directions. In this case, it's a little bit easier in which to see. You may remember that we talked a little bit about balanced forces. Is this, Newton's third law, the same as balanced forces? Well, the answer is no. So try not to get these confused. Uh, whenever you have balanced forces, you have something acting on one object. I think we mentioned a car in that video. Say we have a car here, and they're all the car is not moving, but we have all these forces 
that act against it. We have gravity, we have friction, we have the potential force of moving it one way, we have the potential force of moving it another way, you have air which could be blowing on it, you have all these forces that could potentially act on one thing. But that's not the case with the action-reaction pair, force pair. You have forces acting on two things. Here, the golf ball, force acting on that, the golf club. Here, you have force acting on one skater, force acting on another skater. Here, you have force, force acting on Hunter, which is the reaction to the force that's happening going out the bullet, out, out the uh, end of the gun. And you can do that for all three of these. So don't confuse those. So, in our last videos, we have talked about Isaac Newton and his first, second, and third law. And here's a picture of Isaac Newton when he was young. Young, flowing hair, nice chiseled face. But instead of the stoic picture, picture he had all kinds of laws about motion. He really studied motion a lot. So let's see if you know these laws. First law, object at rest remains at rest. Object at motion remains in motion. This is called the law of inertia. The second law is the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. Uh, you have to increase the mass if you have constant acceleration to have the same force and so on and so on. Uh, and the third law for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And these three laws can explain pretty much every motion there is. Let's take, for example, a kangaroo. A kangaroo is at rest, and in order for it to get going, it has to have an unbalanced force that makes it go. That is Newton's first law. Newton's second law is force equals mass times acceleration. Here you have one animal that has more mass than the other, it is predictable that it would take more force to get a higher acceleration, just like the two milk cartons in another video. Newton's third law for a reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. As this animal is running, he is putting force on the ground, and the ground is putting force upon it. You can predict stuff from Newton's three laws. For example, say we're sending a spaceship from Earth to Mars. It's going to take a couple of years just to get there. So every force that is acting upon the Earth and acting upon Mars and would act upon that spaceship has to be taken into account. If it's not taken into account, all these forces, these predictable forces that Newton was talking about, then you're going to end up missing Mars in its orbit in the gravitational pull of the Earth, in the gravitational pull of Mars, in any kind of force that could uh, could mess it up. Here you have a boat, and you have a different kind of boat out here, and a different kind of boat out here. If you were to choose which one you would race, using the formula force equals mass times acceleration, the mass would tell you which one would be harder to get to accelerate, which one would be easier to get to accelerate, uh, the acceleration potential of the paddle here. I mean, if you take the paddle one direction, then it's going to move the boat in the other direction. And it's just uh, these forces can be used all over the place in any motion you can think of. But the question is, can you remember them? Here I have nine different actions and they can be categorized as either having to do with Newton's first law, second law, or third law. So let's go over them again. Objects remain at rest. An object tend to remain at rest. Objects remain in motion tend to remain in motion unless acted upon by a balance forced, unbalanced forced. Second is mass times acceleration equals force. And third law is every action has an equal and opposite reaction. See what you can do. Hmm. Let's take this one. We first have a ball which is going to be knocked up upon these and you have an action here and on the other side you have an opposite reaction here. So that of course is going to be Newton's 
third law. Uh, what about this one here? Here we have a coin that coins that are at rest. These coins right here are at rest, and when you thump this coin and dislodge this coin, these tend to remain at rest. Which law is that? Why, it's the first one, of course. Hmm, will this be the second law? Let's see. Here we have a cannon firing. We have a force going out one direction and a force going out the other direction. That will be an equal and opposite force. So this is Newton's third law. Here we have a car which has struck something and the person is going out the car. He is being thrown out the car. So that has to do with bodies in motion tend to want to stay in motion. Which one is that? Why, it's the first one. Here we have acceleration of two stones. We have one very large, one very small. The mass of these two stones is affecting its acceleration. So that is Newton's second law. I think I will move that. <laughs> Maybe I'll just do that. Here we have an elephant, which is being pushed by a guy. The elephant, the mass is definitely affecting the acceleration. So we have the same thing, Newton's second law. What about down here? We have two guys pushing two carts that have different weights in them. Different weights in them. The mass is going to affect how they accelerate. Huh, I had three of these in a row, but I don't have any more. Because here we have the force of the hammer is hitting against the nail, and the force of the nail is coming back against the hammer. That is Newton's third law. And finally, we have this guy who puts on the brakes and he goes forward. That is inertia, my friends. And the law of inertia is the first law right there. So maybe you can, uh, when you're studying for something, go back to where none of these lines are here. And uh, maybe that way you can kind of pick them out. Hey, I hope you are successful in picking out the three laws of motion and that you know what the third law of motion is.